What's up YouTube? Coming at you with another video, one that I am very excited to make. This mod has been one that I've been anticipating most for the truck. I'm going to be adding the Raptor steering wheel with working paddle shifters. I've got the steering wheel here, which has nice soft touch leather compared to the plastic on my XLT. And then of course it also has the paddle shifters. I'm gonna be using this harness here from Boosted Grade Goose Designs, which enables the use of the paddle shifters. I think that this is gonna be a great mod for towing because I'll be able to manually shift up in the hills and carry out a gear longer than the transmission shifting would otherwise. All right, let's get to work. Sorry, I picked the worst day to do this. My neighbors are getting a tree cut down, so it's gonna be a little noisy in the background. But the first step is to disconnect the batteries. If you don't disconnect the batteries when you're removing the horn slash um, airbag here, you might accidentally engage the airbag and end up with it in your face. So make sure to disconnect the negative terminal. And if you have two batteries, make sure to do it on both. So now that the battery is disconnected, you're going to want to use an Allen key. And there's a little hole behind the steering wheel on each side, which will disengage the clips that hold the airbag in place. So I'm using a three millimeter Allen key. I think as long as it fits in the hole, it should be okay. There we go. All right, got it loose here. So now that we have the airbag slash horn um, popped out of the clips, the next step is to disconnect the two wires. So there's one right here. You need to pull this little orange tab up with a screwdriver or something, and then this whole thing will come out. And then there's another one back here that you have to disconnect as well. Can you see that? Oh yeah, that red, that red clip right there. So we'll be doing those next. So just take the screwdriver that tab open and then the whole thing should just come out oh there we go okay so now that the yellow clips undone this red one can slide off a little post here and then there's just one little tooth here that you have to disengage in order to disconnect it there we go Ooh. set this aside and then now you're gonna need a 15 16 socket to take this off here all right so I've got my 15 16 on here with an extension if you have a torque gun you could probably use that to put a bit of pressure on it and then it'll loosen up All right, now that the bolt's off, there's just a little tab here. You need to disengage this clip and then the whole steering wheel should come off leaving this yellow um, clip behind. So there we go. XLT wheel is officially off. Now I've got both wheels here side by side. You can see that the inner portion is exactly the same. That's why it fits right on there. Um, one thing to note is that there are two different versions of the texture of the Raptor wheel. The red stripe up here has a perforated leather on the two, like three and nine o'clock positions. The orange stripe has just smooth leather all the way around. That's why I picked the, the orange stripe because I like that continuous smooth leather all the way around. Also, you can see on this steering wheel, there's an option for the heated steering wheel button. I'm not sure if you can pick up an orange steering wheel without the heated um, option, but that may be a possibility. You can see over here on my steering wheel from the XLT, there is no heated steering wheel, so it's just the mute button there. Other than that, the steering wheels are identical. You can pick up an extra harness from Boosted Gate Grey Goose to make the heated steering wheel work. Uh, I live in California, it rarely gets cold enough to utilize that. It's actually significantly more expensive than their uh, paddle shift harness. And I think that there's additional parts you need to buy on top of it if your truck didn't come with heated steering. So for, you know, 300 plus dollars to me, it wasn't worth it. Something else that you can do is if you don't like this dark gray surround on the hand controls here, you can actually pop this whole uh, section of controls off 
and swap it with the stock XLT ones. But the XLT, I don't know if you can see, it's got this kind of textured black plastic. It looks pretty cheap to me. And then if you look at the accents in my truck, it's pretty similar to what comes on the Raptor steering wheel. So I think that I'm gonna keep it because it matches the truck nicely. And I don't mind having one button that has no use on the steering wheel as a whole. All right, now that we have the steering wheel off, uh, this is where the instructions from Boosted Gray Goose come in. Basically, what we're going to be doing is taking this plastic trim off, and that'll expose some wires in there. Inside the steering column, I guess, you put this harness in line, and then there's these three pins that you have to connect in a very specific spot in order to make everything work properly. So. I've got this 10 page document that I printed. It comes with the harness via email and then it basically tells you step by step what to do. So I'll be following that along as we make this video here. So I'm going to use my little plastic pry tool here to get these clips off. Ooh. There we go. And then now back here this piece in the back of the dash you can see it a little better it just pops right up supposedly Ooh, hopefully it doesn't break nothing oh there we go i always get very nervous when i'm doing clips like this because once they break you're never going to get it back in exactly how it was from the factory so take your time go slow don't force anything all right so now you can see this whole piece comes off and we'll set this aside Okay, so this right here is the plug that we need to get to to put the harness in line with. So I'm gonna get my little pry tool here and get this Christmas tree clip undone. There we go. All right, now that we have the Christmas tree clip undone, we're gonna undo this. And then this is where the harness from Boosted Gray Goose is gonna go in line. So you're gonna plug it in line here and then we're gonna come over to this side and then do this plug back here and this is where we're going to put the three pins all right so here's a top down view of the steering column back here you can see this is the plug that we need to undo where we're going to insert the pins that run from the harness there's a little plug here you see if i could do this one hand to depress it and then plug it so back here is where we're going to be inserting the pins but in order to release this we need to take this white plastic piece off which holds everything in place so we'll do that very carefully now okay so what you're going to want to do is take the screwdriver and press down and kind of forward here you can see i disengage that side and then same thing over here down down and forward and then this will I'm not sure if it comes all the way off or not. That may be it. So in the instructions, it shows that this plug that we released from the left hand side is where we're going to put the three pins. So I don't know if you can see here, but in the bottom left, it has a number seven and then the bottom right, it has a number 12. So that means that this is pin number seven, eight, and then we're gonna be working with nine, 10, 11, and 12 will be left blank or empty. So the harness comes with the pins here labeled. So number nine, 10, and 11. Um, so I think here in the instructions, it shows that the number nine is downshift, number 10 is upshift, and then the number 11 is the signal return. So to me, it looks like there's this little bevel point and then here in the pin look or the pin slot, it has like a little tab. So I'm guessing that's the way it goes in like this. So I'm gonna go ahead and insert number nine into the tab here and hopefully we'll hear a little click. Oh, we did, perfect. All right, so next we're gonna do number 10. So you want, I don't know if you can see that very well, but you want this little cutout to be going towards the bottom of the clip. So number 10, we're gonna get in here. Ooh, I started putting it in the wrong way. Got a nice positive click. You try to pull back, you get nothing. And then 
I guess number 11 really should kind of come out the bottom here. What do you think all crossed over each other? So we'll see here number 11, second to the last tab. Got it in there. Hopefully that's in focus. And so we got a click for each one. So that should be it. Now we're going to depress the plastic here. Let's see if I can do it with my fingers and then push the white capture clip back in place. So now everything should be locked in nice and sturdy. So once again, this is the left side of the steering column. Put this back here and then this goes in here. Nice positive click. All right. All right, so this is the boosted Grey Goose harness. We're gonna take the harness from the truck and then plug it into the boosted Grey Goose harness. Get a nice click there. And then here's the other uh, wire that we first unclipped. And the other end of the harness is gonna go in here. So you can see it's in line between the two of the the harnesses that came with the truck and then the third wire that comes off is what goes and that's what you pin in over here on the left side of the steering wheel all right so now i've got the christmas tree clip that we originally took off slid back on the harness where it, it was and just slides into place here but looking at the ooh, took it off but looking at the harness that came from Boosted Grey Goose, they included a new Christmas tree clip. I don't know if you can see that, there you go. And so what I'm thinking is that they intended for this to go in the mounting location right here where we took the clip off of originally. And then this probably just kind of tucks back here. So I'm gonna leave this piece, this original clip on here just to keep it so I don't lose it. And I think I'm gonna kind of zip tie this together and then have it sitting back here in this void. And then I'll have the boosted Grey Goose um, harness clipped in place where the original clip was. So I can't see any other location where the Christmas tree clip that boosted Grey Goose scent would go. So I'm gonna click that there and then get some zip ties. Kind of zip tie this whole mess together. Hopefully this works okay. Um, the only thing that I could think is if it interferes with the raising and the lowering of the steering column, but it seems like there's a big enough void back here that there's plenty of room for it to move. If it doesn't work, I just have to take the steering wheel off and put it back in the original location and I'll definitely update you guys if that's the case. All right, so at this point, everything's installed how it should be according to the directions. Now we just gotta put everything back together and then test out the steering wheel. So I think that's it. It looks like it's all installed properly. Uh, let's take it for a test drive and see how it works. All right, so here we are on the country road. Let me shift it into manual. You can see there the dash changes to M1. Let's test it out. Working flawlessly. So now with the 10-speed transmission, this mod might be kind of pointless for a lot of you guys. But for me, with my 6-speed transmission, this will be invaluable when towing. I've got the 6.2 liter F250, so that comes with the 6R100 transmission. So it's the only configuration, I think, that has a 6-speed in it still. So with only six gears, nothing in between to help out in the hills, this will be really, really nice to help carry a gear longer up in the mountains. I live near the Sierra Nevadas and I quite frequently go up to Oregon. So going both those directions, being able to shift manually on the steering wheel instead of having to use the stupid dial over here will be super nice. I've got it back into automatic now and just driving automatic but having this nice soft touch leather steering wheel feels so much better than the hard plastic that came with the XLT. 
even if you have a 10 speed and you're not wanting to do the paddle shifters i highly suggest you upgrade to a lariat or better steering wheel if you've got an xl or xlt besides your seats it's the only point of the truck that you're touching almost 100 percent of the time while you're driving and i think that having a nicer steering wheel just enhances the driving experience so much let's pull over here One other thing I'd like to point out with this modification is I decided to keep the control bezel from the Raptor wheel like I had said. I am missing the heated steering wheel button, but one thing I did notice is that on the XLT wheel here, the push to talk and the mode buttons are configured like this. Mode up here by your thumb and then the push to talk down here. On the Raptor wheel, it's the opposite. I've got the push to talk button up here and the mode button down here. Unfortunately, probably because of the pinout, it's not functioning how this is uh, configured. So if I press the mode button, you can see I get the, the voice command to come up here. And then I've got the radio on. If I push the push to talk button, it cycles through. So that's the only thing. If you decide to keep this control bezel and you have an XLT wheel like this, these two buttons are gonna be swapped. Okay, so I did some reading on the Ford Trucks forum. Um, if you're gonna do this mod, go check out that website. There's a thread going on with about 32 pages of information about doing this mod, so it'll answer most of your questions that, you could, that could come up. But anyways, a user, uh, TB250, told me that you can actually remove this cluster of buttons from the bezel itself and then that way it'll solve the issue of having the man the mode and the voice activation buttons in the wrong spot and it will also get rid of the button for the heated steering wheel which i chose not to install so let's just pull up here on the bezel i guess kind of start at the bottom is what i read there we go All right, now that I have the bezel up, there's two harnesses, one on either side that you need to undo in order to get to the controls. Ooh. Let's see. There we go. There's just a little pin here you gotta undo. All right, so now we've got the, the bezel off here. So this is a T7. I'm not sure if that's the actual size, but it, it'll work, it looks like. All right, so there we go. I've got the piece separated. Now I just need to pull, undo the batteries on my truck, pull the airbag off, take the trim off, and then reinstall this. So I could have saved myself doing all that work by reading the forum thoroughly before doing this mod. I just followed the instructions from the Boosted Great Goose handout that they sent with the part. Um, yeah, so that's why it's important to read through forums to find out little tidbits like this before you actually go to do some work on your truck. Okay, so you can see that I have the Raptor steering wheel bezel off now. Just looking at them side by side, it just looks so much better compared to the XLT. Um, one thing to note when taking the airbag off of the Raptor wheel, the little holes that you depress with the Allen key are actually kind of hidden behind the paddle shifters um so they're not as visible as they are with the xlt wheel all right there we go finished product here have the buttons in the correct place like i said read the forum guys before you start doing a modification you'll save yourself some headache shout out to tb250 for helping me out with this one all right guys so i have the button cluster on the right hand side swapped over from the xlt bezel now so you can see I've got my push to talk button here. That's working. Cancel it. No heated steering wheel button. And then if I turn on my radio, you can cycle through the different modes here. 
So we got the install complete. I am very, very happy with the performance. Shout out Boosted Grey Goose. Thank you so much for making these harnesses. Everyone go check out BoostedGreyGooseDesigns.com, I believe is the web address. If not, I'll have it in the description below. Go check out their website. They have lots of other cool harnesses that allow you to customize your truck and make it better than it is stock. If you have a 17 through 19 F250, F350, I would highly suggest doing this mod. If you've got a 2020 or above F250 with a 6.2 liter engine, pretty much any truck with a 6 b transmission is what I'm trying to say, I would highly suggest doing this mod. It's gonna be super useful towing, it's kind of fun. If you've got the new 10 speed transmission, I think it's more of a novelty item. With the 10 different gears, you really don't need to shift through them like you would or hold a gear like you would with a 6 speed transmission. While it is fun, it wasn't cheap. The harness is $125 and the steering wheel is anywhere from $300 to $500 depending on what you buy. So for a novelty, I wouldn't do it, but if you're going to be towing with a 6 speed transmission, I think that this is one of the best upgrades that you can do. Anyway, thanks for watching. Please hit the like button and consider subscribing if you want to see more videos as I customize my truck and my trailer.